Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, your channel, Root and Elevate. Madhava here with yet another freaking awesome video. Unless of course you don't like my videos, then of course you can just go watch something else. Hit that like button if you love this channel. Hit it, smash it, you know, it doesn't cost you a thing. Thanks for tuning in today. This video is part of my series called Ingredients. And I'll be talking about a very controversial subject. Nutritional yeast. But before we go any further, I'm doing something a bit different this time. I have a question for you. Ready? Do you have any questions for me? And if you could sprinkle some magic so that I would make a video on something you are interested in, what would that video be about? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, back to nutritional yeast. What the heck is it? Where does it come from? How is it made? Is it really healthy eating nutritional yeast or not? Does it contain MSG? And does it give you yeast infections? Well, it's a very controversial subject, right? I did the legwork for you. And let me tell you, I don't know what's up with the stars, but this is one of those videos that took me so many hours of thorough research. I read and I read and then I read some more and I sent emails to manufacturers and then I got on the phone with them and yet it was very confusing. But in the end, I got to the truth. Do you want to know what that is? Well, keep watching. Let's start from, well, the beginning, shall we? That way we have a more grounded understanding of the subject. What is yeast and are all yeast the same? Humans have been using yeast since, well, forever. Egyptians' runes suggest that yeast has been an important part of the human diet for at least 4,000 years. So, this is nothing new, you guys. Yeast could probably be one of the most ancient microorganisms that exist. There are many types of yeast. Some are used to brew beer, some are to make wine, some to bake, some are present in kombucha, some are used for fermentation, and some are even considered uh, opportunistic pathogens like Candida albicans. The three most common types of yeast used for food are brewer's yeast, baker's yeast, and nutritional yeast. All three are made using the same yeast species called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. I don't know if I said that right, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so these three um, food yeasts are made from that yeast species, yet from different strains. So the resulting product has a different composition, they all have a different purpose. Nutritional yeast is a condiment used most of the times, but not all the time, by vegans to add a cheesy, nutty flavor to dishes. It is high, but super high in protein. It contains all the essential amino acids. It has antioxidants, it's gluten-free, it's super rich on B vitamins, folic acid. It has something called beta-glucan, which is amazing for your immune system and much more. It's basically considered a superfood. And, well, it's pretty tasty. Now, here is where the conundrum begins. Ready? Where does nutritional yeast come from? How is it grown or cultivated? Well, all yeast have something in common. One thing in common. They love sugar. Nutritional yeast is cultivated or grown in either beet syrup, corn syrup, or sugar cane. The problem is all these three crops are most likely to be GMO crops or genetically modified crops. So when the nutritional yeast is 
feasting on these sugars, on these crops, they're also feasting and concentrating within them all the uh, pesticides, the insecticides, the glyphosates, and then, you know, all the harmful stuff. If you have bought nutritional yeast before or you've seen it in the stores, you probably noticed that there is two versions, a fortified one and then a non-fortified. Now, what does that really mean? Fortified sounds like a good idea, right? Well, listen up. Once the nutritional yeast have been grown and cultivated in these sugar substrates, then it's a paste, and that paste needs to be pasteurized or heated up, and then dried out to make these flakes or powder that you see in the stores. Now this product, which has lost some of the nutrients because of the heating process, needs to be revitalized by adding synthetic vitamins to create a sort of uh, impressive nutrient-dense profile. In fact, some of the manufacturers add a synthetic B12 called cyanocobalamin, which is not easily absorbable by the body and can have some really unwanted side effects. Nutritional yeast non-fortified is considered a much healthier version. It does not contain as much B12 as the other one, but it does contain naturally occurring B-complex amino acids and essential nutrients. Can you get certified non-GMO nutritional yeast? Well, there is a few brands that claim to be non-GMO, but they're not actually certified. I chose four lead brands that claim to be non-GMO, Anthony's Wood, Foods Alive, Bragg's, and Call. I emailed all of these companies and I talked to them over the phone and none of them could guarantee that the, what the yeast has been munching on is actually non-GMO. They did say that the carbohydrate source is consumed by the yeast during the growth process and is not present in the finished product. Well, I would argue, and I did, picture a cow that's eating genetically modified grain versus a cow that's eating grass. The meat that comes from the cows that eat genetically modified feed cannot legally be considered non-GMO if he ate genetically modified organisms or feed then it is GMO okay so any organism whether it's a cow or a yeast if it consumes GMO or genetically modified organisms then in itself it contains that code that that modification right so after I presented my argument, they finally said, we cannot guarantee that the substrate the yeast is grown on is non-GMO. Okay, so basically what I found was that there is no such a thing as non-GMO nutritional yeast, as none of these companies could actually prove that. Ugh, right? Why does it need to be so complicated and toxic? Well, just about when I was to abandon the ship and never again use nutritional yeast, I found the Holy Grail. <music> nutritional yeast, guaranteed non-GMO, certified organics. They use a nutrient solution made of organic rice to feed and grow the yeast. They do not add any weird synthetic vitamins and they do not use any chemical additives into their fermentation process. I wrote them an email, I talked to them over the phone, very kind people. They immediately sent me documentation proving they meet the strict guidelines and certifications that guarantees that there's no GMO in their products whatsoever. They do add a bit of organic rice flour and salt 
to the final product. So I asked them why would they do that and they said that the rice flour keeps the nutritional yeast fluffy and usable and so it doesn't stick together and then salt for flavor. I imagine that because this is not a synthetically manipulated product that perhaps it doesn't have that like strong unami savory flavor than other brands do so maybe salt uh, it makes sense to add salt I don't know but you know even though it has salt and a little bit of rice flour I still think it's the best option now when I did found these product I it was glorious right because it was like I was a, about to abandon the ship yet I still have not tasted it but they did send me a sample in the mail so I can't wait to open it smell it taste it so I can really tell you hey this is like delicious and great and healthy so that I can also share some recipes with all of you we'll see now, you may be thinking, wow, this woman is a non-GMO freak. Well, you make sense thinking that because maybe I am. But hey, it matters. It does matter. Now, let's keep digging, shall we? Because we need to. Stay with me because the million dollar question is up now. Does nutritional yeast contain MSG? We all know that MSG or monosodium glutamate is an excitotoxin, it's extremely poisonous and very harmful to the nervous system. It basically kills the brain cells. Nutritional yeast does not have MSG or it is MSG in itself like some people claim out there. There is lots of documents to prove that and yet the most uh, <clears throat> accurate, I say, proof of this is that I am highly allergic to MSG. When I was traveling in Asian countries in Bali, I ate some MSG that was in the food and my body broke in hives and I became irritable in my nervous system. And so I am highly allergic to it and I have eaten many times nutritional yeast with no, none of these effects. What it does contain is glutamic acid, which is a, an amino acid that's vital for healthy brain function and development. It is found in our bodies abundantly, and in fact, it is uh, used by almost all living things for protein synthesis and sodium, calcium, magnesium regulation in the bloodstream. And that's just a few of the benefits of glutamic acid. Glutamic acid, also found in legumes, meat, cheese, fish, nori, dolls, seaweed, and well, even some fruits and vegetables. And last but not least, does nutritional yeast contribute or causes yeast infections? Well, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is non-pathogenic and does not cause or contribute or exacerbates yeast infections. So if you think nutritional yeast, candida, yeast is yeast, well, no. These are two completely different things. And well, if you still have some doubts in your mind, I have to mention again, when the yeast is pasteurized and dried out, it is deactivated. So basically, kaput. So there is no way that the yeast could resurrect and be alive again. To be fully transparent, two weeks ago, I thought all nutritional yeast were the same. And if you said, non-GMO in the package, it must be so, so I moved on. And so the initial idea and intention for this video was actually sharing with you all my cheesy salad dressing made with nutritional yeast. And then when I started digging deeper and, and doing research, 
I entered the freaking rabbit hole and it took me in and it digested me and now I'm left with a lot of information useful information yet a lot of information and so now the hope is for this brand that is actually actually non-gmo and so if after what they said and if it tastes good i'll report i'll report back to you guys with some awesome delicious recipes maybe so we'll see okay so if you haven't subscribed please do so and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the follow-up on this. In the meantime, I invite you to chip in the conversation. Let me know what you think. What's your experience? Have you ever eaten nutritional yeast? And if so, how do you use it? And how do you like it? And do you have you found any interesting research on it? If so, i love to know. Link it all below, baby. And smash that like button if you haven't yet. And thanks so much for watching. Aloha.